Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm pleased that you're here with me today at Trader Pub. Uh, this is a, an incredibly good lineup. I, I really appreciate everyone being here. I will try to get through this as quickly as possible so you'll have time to ask questions. Um, this workshop, as you can see, is all about how to overcome fear. Webster's Dictionary uh, defines fear as an unpleasant, often strong emotion, which <clears throat> caused by anticipation or awareness of danger, which creates anxiety and usually the loss of courage. Let me put that up. Hold on. Just have to get used to the buttons. Whenever something bad happens to you, you experience a loss. The way I'd like to explain it so you have a more tangible understanding is that losses translate to your body as a negative vibration that attaches itself to your cellular structure. When there are many losses, the vibration becomes very strong and accumulates in your cells over time. Then whenever you have any kind of perceived loss, all the experiences of physical and psychological losses are activated. This can paralyze you so you, can, you don't think and act appropriately. You can usually handle a small loss in trading that results from following your rules. If you get another loss in the sequence, you might begin to feel uncomfortable. By the third loss in a row, your mind and body will most likely activate a fear response that is not only from this loss, but also from all of the other losses in your life. At this point, you're questioning your strategy and yourself. By the fourth loss, you're wondering if you're meant to be a trader, even though in simulation you've seen where your strategy has earned profits in the overall picture of following your rules. After this drawdown, the uncomfortable feelings you experience can make you doubt your strategy and your ability after even only one loss. It's likely that you'll become more hesitant and cautious to enter a trade because you're avoiding the pain and the self-recrimination. If the issues of life aren't addressed, then whenever you anticipate having a trading loss, your body remembers the pain of the previous losses and will remind you, even with words that scream out in your head, remember what it felt like the last time? <clears throat> or you can't afford to lose money. And even... Uh, and eventually, you'll just experience the uncomfortable feeling itself without having the pictures or words attached. Fear has many faces, such as anger, frustration, anxiety, even greed. It basically, basically translates to your mind and your body as a state of stress. When you're in a state of stress, your emotions then take over, which results in your trading emotionally and not logically. In other words, you become your ignorant self, that doesn't remember all of the education that you developed as a trader. You're in a fight or flight mode, making dumb choices. So let's look at some of the different types of fear and how this translates to trading decisions. Number one, fear of loss. You hesitate to execute your trading plan for entering, exiting trades. Very often you attach the loss to what the money was intended for you, had you not lost it, commitments such as your children's education, your family vacation, your retirement money, or your trading account money. This brings up feelings of guilt, especially if your spouse is also counting on your earning money from uh, the investment. Number two, fear of missing out on profits, runaway booms, tips, or news items where you're afraid to miss out on an opportunity. There's a myriad of information out there coming from news networks and other people with an opinion. This information can be very compelling for you <clears throat> Excuse me, to take action on what you perceive as good opportunity. It's especially true if it's coming from so-called expert or wealthy person or person who is just a good salesman. Number three, fear of letting a profit turn into a loss. You equate your net worth with your self-worth. You want to lock in a quick profit to guarantee that you'll feel like a winner. The problem is that your overall trading plan depends on you letting your profits run to bring in the full returns that your strategy promises. From having experience receiving payment for a job well done in the past, the exchange becomes an anchor 
in your neurological system of expectancy. When a reward in trading is not realized, the disappointment can make you feel cheated and are not worthy. So you decide not to let the markets get the better of you by trying to outsmart them. The problem is that those trades that make your strategy work are usually in the trades where you have exited early. Number four, fear of not being right. This fear is an ego issue which results in the desire to take winners too quickly and sit on losers in often misguided hopes of exiting at break even. When you've experienced good results coming out of hard work, you expect that the same will follow in your trading results. The problem is that trading is a different animal, and while it does take hard work, it also takes making the right choices of how to, you choose uh, to work hard. I was just looking to see if there were any questions. It's hard to answer questions, though, now. I've met many traders over the years who've invested huge amounts in their education and have kept many hours only to find that the choices they've made didn't allow for profitable results. Rather than taking another path, they often push to make what they've invested in time and money and work. They don't want to feel stupid about the choices they've made. Let's see, Tony says, trading is so hard I've never found anything that works yet. I, I can tell you this, Tony. I work with many, many people, and many people are successful. So that's the good news. The bad news is that I've also met a lot of people that aren't successful. <clears throat> okay. Here, here are other expressions of how traders interpret fear. I can't trust my strategy. Your strategy is only as good as your ability to follow it after it has been tested to be a strategy that can pr produce profits. I'm afraid to place a trade even though my strategy says it's a good opportunity to enter. If you can't place a trade, then it's you that needs a fixing. The longer you hold off on working on this issue, the worse it's going to get. I'm afraid if I don't keep the trade, I'll lose the poss possible profits even though my money management has been preset. There's always another trade. Learn from the best traders who say that, that strict adherence to money management rules is one of the keys to most profitable results. I'm afraid of the pain I'd feel if I lose money. You survived feeling pain before. If you'd want to experience the ultimate pain, that of not being able to become a trader, then face the fear and take the trade anyway. If that doesn't work, get help or get a real job. Excuse the uh, ring in the background. I'm afraid that I'm not a good enough trader to make it uh, in this profession. You've most likely not at this, this moment. Can you remember times in your life that you were not good enough until you were? What did you do to ride that bicycle, drive that car, learn that new job, and approach it the person who has turned out to be the significant other in your life? Every profession has learning curve. A long journey begins with one step. And every great trader has taken that same first step. Len, fear of loss, proper entry and stop loss, fear of missing out on profits, defined targets, fear of letting profits turn to loss, move stop, break even. And uh, Len, these, this is all really great advice. And practically, uh, if people were to do that, uh, they would have no problem. But the problems, I'm afraid, go deeper. Okay, where was I? Number six. I'm afraid that I don't deserve to be successful and make more money than I'm used to. I can assure you that you only make the money that you deserve in trading. It takes time, energy, study, and skill to be a top trader. If you teach, if you reach to that level of those few that make it, you most certainly deserve it. Number seven. I'm afraid that I really don't know what I'm doing. That's what teachers and coaches are for. That's what testing is all about. Until you reach the point of being sure of what you're doing, you should not risk your hard-earned money. I'm afraid of losing more money and losing my business or my house. Trading is a business that requires risk. It's foolish to risk your base foundation of security if you can't afford to get into the business of trading and wait until you can. Number nine, I'm afraid of making a mistake and then losing money. 
I can guarantee you that you'll make many mistakes. If you're not okay with making mistakes and learning from them, then trading isn't for you. I'm afraid of being afraid because it's too painful. Then everything that's worthwhile would be out of reach. To be a successful trader, you must have the mindset of an entrepreneur, even if you're working for someone else. I'm afraid that if I don't make money, my spouse will give me an ultimatum. It's your responsibility to get full approval and cooperation of your spouse to become a professional trader. If you don't, then you'll either have a difficult time getting there, <coughs> having uh, have to give it up, or lose your spouse. I need a tea break. Hold on. Number 12. I'm afraid that someday my luck will run out and I won't be able to enjoy the lifestyle that we've been accustomed to having. This can happen as a result of many situations, a weather catastrophe like Sandy, a sickness, a death, or a job loss. The success you have in trading now won't assure that the, that the future will be as rosy as it is today. I'm afraid that I might have to give up trading and get a real job. This is why you must have a solid foundation before you start. Enough money for your, your trading business, inventory for your trading account, and a good education with proven records. And yes, I know, trading is a real job. So, what's good about fear? It's your first line of defense. It's responsible for keeping the human race going for three and a half million years. It's your protective mechanism. It alerts you to danger. And what specifically happens to your body <clears throat> when you're afraid? Well, blood vessels constrict their inner muscles, heart rate increases, salivary glands dry, blood shuts down, function not involved, body, I'm sorry, and you exhaust your adrenals. Do you want to trade when you're feeling this way? I hope not. <clears throat> Excuse me. Traders enhance their experience of fear when they partake in addictive behaviors which stimulate a release of adrenaline, uh, adrenal hormones. Of course, examples are sugar, caffeine, alcohol, nicotine, drugs, and coffee. I know, your breakfast. I'm going to tell you a story about um, a fellow by the name of Eric. He came on the financial scene to become a broker in the early 90s. His father, John, gave him a good start by giving his son all of uh, his accounts that were below 100000 This amount amounted to about $5 million. Basically, all Eric had to do was show up at work, fill orders, and the generous commissions were his. Eric became interested in trading and started to give advice to his customers. His advice came from a weak foundation of trading knowledge and he started to lose money for his clients. Eric added to his problem by being a party animal. He frequently didn't show up at work and when he did, he was late and half stoned. John, his father, witnessed Eric's behavior and told him that unless he straightened out, he was on his own. John died within a year of Eric's coming into the business, leaving his inheritance to his wife and his other children. This event shook Eric up to consider a change, but he was consumed with fear and bad habits. Before John passed away, he recommended that Eric work with me. John was actually one of my clients. After evaluating Eric, I suggested that he work with someone else. I refused to work with privately with people who don't have any discipline in their lives. Eric asked me what he'd have to do for me to consider working with him. He said he would do whatever it took, but he was not ready, and we both knew it. Along the way towards becoming ready, Eric kept in touch. Each time I gave him the same advice. Eric had to reach bottom before he started to turn himself around, and I, I'd consider working with him. It took another three years. I'm happy to report that he's now a successful trader. And by the way, his father did leave him a trust that would only become available to him if the family saw a sincere effort that he'd straighten out. Here's some of the advice that I gave him. Make sure you have a business plan with a well-tested strategy in place. And by a business, man, a business plan, I mean everything that you would put in a normal business plan plus your strategy for getting in and out of trades. You, call, you could call it a strategy, a methodology. It's, it, it doesn't really matter what you call it, but basically uh, 
seeing the opportunity. What 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 does opportunity look like, and how do you how do you like uh, define it? <clears throat> make sure you tested that strategy to ensure that both the strategy and you can make a profit in in simulation, and then in real time. Have a checkoff list for entering a trade. And when you get to the bottom of the list, don't go to the top of the list again. Just <laughs> take the trade. Know what your risk reward is for that trade. Have an exit strategy in place. Applaud and reward yourself when you follow your rules, even when it's a loss. <clears throat> Journalize each trade for your quarterly review of your strategy. And when you see that you could make more profits, but something is holding you back, then take something like my trader's evaluation to determine the issues, how serious they are, and what to do about them. If you have conditioned yourself with bad habits uh, that you can't break yourself, then I have a top performance seminar that I've been doing for 23 years uh, that you might consider. And if you have deep-seated issues, you might consider private coaching. And the trader's evaluation can determine that. Oops. Here we go back here. If the issues of not making profit are a result of your trading uh, strategies, then you either have to go back to the drawing board and come up with a new strategy or purchase a strategy, 10 trading schools, hire a trading coach. Now, notice I say trading coach. There's trading coaches and there's traders coaches. And uh, some trading coaches try to do some trading uh, traders coach um, issues that uh, deal with psychology. But usually it's just the superficial, just give good, good advice. And if, if that doesn't work, then you have to go deeper. If the issues are as a result of conditioning, then you can change the conditioning in your own on your own with repeated mental rehearsal. And that's what we're going to do right now. So, here is a mental rehearsal. Close your eyes and see yourself waking from a restful night's sleep. Watch yourself in your mind's eye as you go through a routine where you're making good choices. See yourself getting ready for a day. Perhaps you're doing morning routine of exercise or meditation. Then take a shower, brush your teeth, and comb your hair and dress. Notice how you look in the mirror and say, gosh, I'm handsome, smart, and so rich. It's wonderful how I, can, I continue to enjoy the process of becoming the best trader I can be. Watch as you have a nutritious breakfast a protein with herbal tea while you read the newspaper. Now approach your computer, and perhaps you go over your journal and your strategy. Have a checklist for what you're looking for in an opportunity. And as you see a setup, start checking off the signals that you are receiving that there is a good opportunity. Then all of the, the criteria for entering uh, a trade are reached. Take the trade and set your stop. Acknowledge yourself for taking the opportunity and following your rules. Say, good job. And last, repeat the last part of the mental rehearsal over and over. And if you have your eyes closed, you can open them right now. If the issues are deeply, deeply conditioned, then you work. If the issues are from a series of major losses in your life, especially your childhood, then private coaching work is necessary. If you have a pattern of making money and then losing it, then you have emotional repression issues. This is where you have a series of painful issues in the past where you haven't allowed yourself to feel the feeling through. Just like in the movie classic Gone with the Wind when the lead character Scarlett O'Hara is faced with having to take care of people in her life during the Civil War, when she had almost no resources said, I'll think about it tomorrow. She was pre repressing emotion. Most of us don't want to feel the pain that accompanies difficult times and events, so we stuff the emotions into our neurology like stuffing a pressure cooker, putting on the cap and putting the flame on. When life gets too much, we explode. For a trader who has a good series of wins and then experiences any kind of discomfort, the pressure for keeping the winning streak becomes overwhelming. 
and then it goes against then he goes against himself and loses all his profits so let's look at letting go of stored up emotions on your own give yourself an opportunity to express emotions by watching a movie rereading a sad or funny story and it doesn't matter whether it's sad or funny just getting your emotion out, emotions out is important play with a puppy or a toddler get together with friends that have and have each one tell a happy or tragic event in their lives or have them talk about the saddest and deep happiest story that they've ever heard go to a hospital or visit old or young people who are struggling with life-threatening issues and if you're the kind of person who becomes emotional with sports watch sports events there's certainly a lot of basketball this week and if you are a person who does not allow emotion or issues are too deep-seated then get help or the problem of losing money after making money will persist feeling happy emotions are why we live our lives emotions that inhibit us from great accomplishments however take away the stuff that makes us exceptional human beings to be a successful trader you must be an exceptional person at least these are the kind of people that I like to work with okay the workshop is over. I'm just going to do a short commercial while you write questions because we, we do have some time. Oops. There we go. Uh, I have a course. The course consists of uh, many different products, as you can see. One, uh, this particular workshop uh, came out of one of the Winning Edge books. I've got Winning Edge 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, if you look, uh, it, if you look online, the uh, this course is six hundred and fifty dollars. For those people in this uh, that are listening in, the price would be six hundred. And I'm going to give a special price in the end to people who are actually in the room. Uh, this uh, course includes the evaluation and consultation with me on the phone. So uh, some people think that's worth the whole price of the course. Uh, it has CDs, and DVDs, wake you up in the morning, put you to sleep at night. It's a course like a, a legal library course. Uh, it's something that you, you go through over and over. And uh, there's only one other special special that I give to the people listening in. <clears throat> the first part of the package, or the first, first part of the course, uh, is um, has the evaluation and consultation with me and on Line, it's 200, and uh, the per people that are listening in, it would be 150. All you have to do is say you're from Traders Hub. Okay, and I'm not going to go through any of the other things. Uh, if you want, because I want to give some time to answer questions. This is how to reach me. And for for those serious about trading, the people in the room that, that call me, uh, that um, write me an email within the next two hours you've got just uh, give me your phone number and the best time to reach you I will give you a special special traders pub price it's for only the people who are actually in the room okay let me see what your questions are great session is psychology part of trading 900 percent master uh, mastering who I am and my actions took me the most time of course education practice confidence important but things started working once I got my head screwed on right thank you Len uh, just do it trade small until your <clears throat> courage improves uh, and you know the, the the advice that both Len and Chris are giving are ex extremely good advice the only problem is this uh, there there's uh, coaching at different levels there's coaching at a just do it level and uh, giving specific rules of how to handle each problem and then there's coaching at the subconscious level the superconscious level the energetic level and all the other levels where you're finding that you're not consistent with your rules if you have those kind of problems then you know the uh, just do it kind of uh, coaching uh, may not work for you 
to the to the level that you'd like it to work uh, for you. So that's when you need the kind of people like me. Tony, you ever looked at market delta? How? Tony, how no? I've never heard of that. Okay, you're you're talking about other things when we're doing psychology things. Um, please keep that kind of uh, chatter to the chat rooms or to the the um, the area of um, uh, strategy where other people are on. This is all about psychology. Teo, start trading before I knew what I was doing. Lost money and now I'm paralyzed. What is the best way to start overcoming this? Uh, as I said to you before, uh, the fastest way for you to do it on your own is a mental, uh, mentally rehe mental rehearsal. And you need to prove to yourself that your strategy works. So sim trade, and if you can't sim trade, uh, then what you're going to have to do is uh, get some help. And, you know, my, uh, my trader's evaluation is really good for that. Because if you can't sim trade, then you're not going to be able to real trades and you're going to just lose money and uh, you don't want to do that. <clears throat> and if you find that you sim trade fine, but you can't real trade fine, uh, then, uh, then what you should do is uh, take real money, physical real money, and, uh, you know, like $50 to the, uh, uh, the market and $50 to yourself. And then trade with physically playing with real money and that can build up your confidence okay the self-awareness has to be first step your training would be a great step self-actualization is a lifelong process absolutely what's the best thought process after a loss well the first thing after a loss you have to say did I follow my rules? If you follow your rules, then you pat yourself on the back. If you, uh, if you didn't follow your rules, then you have to say, what lesson did I learn? And uh, once you've written down all of the lessons, uh, you know, try not to repeat them. If you repeat them, then you need help. Can you rec recommend a person like yourself on the East Coast PA? Uh, I can't recommend any particular person. Uh, the one thing that I can say is if you, uh, I'm doing something different than I have done before, and that is I'm doing uh, sessions on Skype. I don't do private work on Skype, but I do private seminars. And the top performance seminar uh, will change your conditioning so you can get in and out of trades when you're supposed to. Okay, we have. A few minutes left. Okay, Chris, I'll be happy to use your information first. Fine. Okay, now, remember this, that uh, the people in the room for the next two hours will have the ability to get special, special prices on two items. The whole course, the whole course is normally 650 To the people who are listening in on uh, the recast, I will give a $50 discount. And you have to say you're from Trader's Pub, and it has to be by Friday. And uh, the other special special will be the uh, first part of the course. The first part of the course is normally $200. Uh, for, for the people listening in, the price would be $150. And a special special price would be given to the people who write to me, give me their phone number, and the best time to reach them. Uh, since I have the time, I'll mention two more things, and then I'll turn it over to Trader's Pub. I have a master class uh, that uh, the next one is August 3rd. This is a webinar, and uh, this is a really good class online that you could find, fill in the blanks of all the problems that uh, you're facing in trading and uh, why why it's come to the point where you were. Uh, that you are in those in that place. Um, this I did all throughout Southeast Asia, and it was very um, very successful. Uh, and people still now and say that each time they take it uh, brings them to a new level of trading. 
And here's the private uh, seminar that I do. I do it privately, and I do it in a group. This particular seminar is full right now, so uh, I don't have a new date for the new one. But uh, if you're out of um, the country, this is a good way of uh, getting to the point of being able to follow, follow your rules and be more consistent in trading. <clears throat> and here's how to get in touch with me. OK. Uh, I'm hearing no sound. Is that because there is no sound? Uh, no, as far as I know, there is sound, Chuck. Um, uh, can everyone hear me? Give me a yay if you can. OK, wonderful. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, uh, Ed. Thank you, all of the people at Traders Pub and DTI for making this available to you. Uh, if you if you want my uh, a copy of my newsletter, free copy, just sign up on my website. <clears throat> Bye, everyone.